Let's look at some more advanced functions on theory. I just have a simple struct here to demo. It has one property for x, which is of type in 32, and it has a y property, which is of type float, so something different. I have a default constructor and a constructor that takes the arguments. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of these structs. So if you want to add an element to this array, the most naive way is to just call add and create a temporary demo struct and provide it some arguments. So we've added an element x1, y is 3, at element 0. There's really nothing that wrong with that, but it is creating a temporary, which may or may not be compiled out after the compiler optimizes the code. But there's also this syntax. And what do you think it's doing? It has the new keyword, but in parentheses it has the array, and then it has the demo struct with arguments. So it looks like we're doing a heap allocation for demo struct, but because we're providing the array in parentheses, we're actually invoking something called a placement new operator. So a placement new is like doing a heap allocation, except for instead of just having the memory come from the heap, you provide it with where the memory should come from. And so in this case, we're saying the struct array, and so Epic has set up T array to work so that if you do placement new, where the T array is the source of the memory, it just adds it to the end of it. And so if I inspect my T array after stepping over this, go into struct, we'll see that element one, we now have 32 and 32, which is what the arguments were. And so this is like constructing it, but we don't need to make it temporary, we just made it directly into the array. Now it returns a pointer, just like the new operator, and so you can check it for null, which I suppose it could fail. It's not likely to fail unless you run out of memory. And we can now access that array. We can set the x to 12 and y to 12. If we inspect the array, we now see that it is 12 and 12 instead of 32, 32. Similar to that, there is a function now called in place, mirroring the CPP 11 patterns. So I prefer this to placement new because you look at this and you have to think about it, whereas in place, you just know that you're adding an array element to the end. So in place, adds it to the end, but unlike add, it doesn't require you to make it temporary. You instead pass the arguments directly to it. And if we open up the array.h, go to in place, you can see it's using forwarding references here. So what it does is that you forward the references as our value references, and it's going to construct the element type, which in our case is the struct, and it forwards the arguments there again. So it's going to construct the thing in place of the memory. And you can see internally it's actually doing something very similar to placement new. It's getting the start of the data, the index that it's going at, and constructing it there using placement new. So I prefer just to use in place because it's less to type and easier to read. And if we step over that, we can look at the array and notice that at the end of the array we have 10 and 30, which is the values we provided. So it called the constructor here where you can provide arguments 10 and 30. There is also a function called add underscore get ref. And so it's similar to the add, but it returns a reference to the thing you added. So unfortunately, you also still have to provide it a temporary to construct the object in the array, but you get a reference. And so with that reference, you can assign to x and y. So we had two and six, and then after I step over it, it assigns to it, and we have 11 and 33. There's also now an in place get ref, which is very similar to add get ref, but it works like in place in that we don't have to create a temporary struct. We can just provide it the arguments and it'll create it in memory. So it works like I get ref, but we don't have to create a temporary struct. We can just provide it the arguments and it'll directly create that in the underlying memory of the array. So if we look at the array at the end, we see two and six arguments here, two and six, but now we have a reference. So we can overwrite those values to 22 and 77. And those values are reflected inside of our array, 22 and 77. So let's make another array. It is empty. And if we look at the size, we can see that it has zero and it has an underlying buffer of zero. So array max being the buffer. So then if we call reserve 10, we have allocated 10 spaces. But if we look at the actual array, it's still empty. And so there's a function called set num zero to five. And if we call set num zero to five, if we inspect our array, we now have five elements that were min zeroed. So this is a, another function you can use to quickly zero out memory. 